Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Happy New Year, everybody, as we approach 2018. What's going to happen in this new year when it comes to the prices of some of these Magic cards? I know I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen, but anyway, today we're here to talk about what's happening just this week in the world of Standard, Legacy, and Modern. A couple notable vintage cards we're going to talk about at the end of the video, too. Quickly before we get started, though, just a really fast reminder... If you're looking for a way to support what we do here at the channel, just check the description below. You'll find a link to our Patreon page. You'll also find links to products on Amazon as well as Flipside Gaming. They've given a promo code for our viewers. All great ways to support what we do here and keep the channel going. So thank you in advance. With that being said, let's get into it. We're going to start off, as we always do, with Standard. And the top five cards that lost value this week. So no surprise here. Standard is incredibly slow right now. Because we are just hours away from the official Rivals of Ixalan previews. And that will start to make things simmer. By next week, I'm sure there's going to be some speculation on certain cards based on what we've seen over the course of the previous week. So I'm looking forward to that. But at least for right now, things are going to be really, really slow. So let's just jump in with number five. Fresca's Contempt. Down 50 cents to 608. Now, this is a staple for removal when it comes to the standard format, but it's taking a pretty big dip this week. The main reason for that is just an incredible level of saturation for Ixalan cards just generally. Now, this is a rare, not a mythic, which means there's a lot, a lot of copies out in the marketplace right now. And the players that need this for standard, they probably have it already, because if they've been thinking about whether it's this current meta or the next meta, they probably picked up their play set, so this card starts to cool off a little bit. But it's an excellent card, even going forward, probably into the next meta, because it deals with Planeswalkers, and there's some problematic Planeswalkers out there. you got to think about Chandra, you got to think about Vraska. So this card dips a little bit this week, mostly due to supply. Number four, Hazaret the Fervent, down 51 cents to 16.72. And this is a card that's also still a pretty major staple, actually, in Standard. Maybe not as much as it once was, but Ramanap Red, Mardu Vehicles decks, they're still hanging around in competitive play as well as casual play, but... Hezrek goes down a little bit this week. Number three, Vraska Relic Seeker, down 65 cents to $13. I said this last week, but even though I realize there's a lot of Ixalan that's been open, especially people who've been opening it for draft and sealed all these months, and even with that fact out there, I do think this aggressively dropped. And is going to be a great card, I think, going forward into the next meta as well. I think what was going against this card recently, though, is the token decks have kind of fallen off the competitive scene a little bit. I mean, they're still very popular and casual, like Friday Night Magic and such. But when it comes to competitive play, they're not putting up the results they were once putting up. But Vraska is in the energy decks, at least some of them. And energy decks, of course, are wildly popular. So she goes down a little more this week, but she's definitely one to watch. Number two, Carnage Tyrant, down 70 cents to 1393 Kind of interesting that this card's waiting till now to drop in a way because we're just hours away from more reveals for rivals. And there's a lot of people thinking, you know, that dinosaur deck almost got there last time. Maybe with a few more cards, it could get there this time. And that's very possible. It just depends on what they give us and where the meta goes, right? So it's weird that it's dropping this much right now. I would think people that waited and kind of held on to this card would have held on just a few more days just to see what happens. But uh, it is down a little bit. Just a funny... Fun fact, actually, with this card, it sees a little bit of vintage play out of sideboards, like as a one of in some decks, just because it's really good against strong control builds. So, I don't know, kind of interesting. Probably not driving the price at all, but just an interesting fact. And number one, you probably guessed it, the Scarab God, yet again, down $1.83 to $30.83. And I said this last week, but it looks like I think by next week this will be under $30, unless we see some preview that really sparks people's interest in this card some more. But is not that it's a bad card. It's pretty much a staple of the standard format at this point. It's also a fantastic commander card. But aside from all of that, there's just a lot of quantity out there, a lot of supply. The people that have this and wanted to position themselves, not only for this meta, but for future metas, they probably got their copies of the card by now. So it's a little bit cooler, and it's just due to the high print of modern era magic. All right, let's move on to the top five standard cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number five, Vanquisher's Banner, up 11 cents to 217. Now, you're going to notice something with the cards on the list today. They're really great casual, sometimes great commander cards more than anything. And that's because, again, people aren't investing in standard right now. They're going to wait and see what's going to happen over the next few weeks. 
Now this card may be some light speculation based on the fact that we're getting more tribal elements from rivals, and that could be why some people are interested in this card right now. But also too, this is really cool for tribal commander decks, casual decks, and this is just a really fun card that you can pick up relatively cheap from Ixalan. Number four, Burrell, Chief of Compliance, up 11 cents to 444. Now we've talked about how this is a very good commander card in the past, still is. Uh, but this card is seeing a little bit of movement this week, also due to the fact that it's a very good modern card. And it's a key part of the Gift Storm decks, which are pretty popular right now. What's really nice about those decks is they can put up some good results, and modern is a healthy format. There's a lot of directions you can go right now. But that particular deck is kind of a budget deck. I mean, you can put it together for $250-ish from scratch. That's actually pretty awesome. Now, as it puts up better results as time goes on, maybe that changes. But at least for right now, you can get the deck pretty cheap and start playing some modern and actually have a chance out there. So that's actually kind of awesome. So expect this card to continue to bump up at least a little bit. Number three, Jason Genius Mind Mage, up 11 cents to $6. Now, this is the Planeswalker deck version. You can't find this in the regular Ixalan packs. You'd have to buy the Planeswalker deck or buy this as a single to get a hold of it. And it's a fine casual card. It's not something that's going to break into standard or anything like that at that casting cost for what it does. But there are some commander decks that like to run something like this, and it can be decent at certain times. So because of that, and considering the fact that the Planeswalker deck will run you a little more than $6, if you're not interested in the whole deck, yeah, $6 is a fair price, I think, for the single. Number two, Field of Ruin, up 13 cents to a dollar. Percentage-wise, this is a pretty nice increase, and this is an excellent uncommon, so there has to be something going on here, right? Well, what is it? Well, a lot of people are looking closely at Field of Ruin, not necessarily for standard, although it has seen play there, but for modern, maybe even some of the other formats, just because there's so many good targets for it, like when you get into modern, right? So, yeah, this is a very interesting card. I saw decks in modern running this out of the main deck. I haven't seen as many recently, so it could be just the case of someone's really trying to find the right number, the right place to play it. Is it something you take out of the board? Is it something you can main deck? I think there's a lot of experimentation right now going on with this card, so... I guess we'll kind of wait and see what happens with it just generally, but there is definitely interest in the modern world around this card, and it has been in some decks that have put up some good results already. And number one, as foretold, up $3.50 to $12.89 this week, and no surprise here, this has been hot for a few weeks now due to the as foretold living in modern decks. So again, not because of standard play, but because of modern play, this makes the top of the list. And the deck definitely was the hot deck of the month for December. What will be the hot deck of the month in January? Let me know your guesses in the comments below. But <laughs> I'll tell you right now, the deck is still putting up good results. We'll have to kind of see if the meta adjusts at all as we go into the next month or so, or if this can continue to do well. All right, let's move on to modern. I feel like we've been talking about modern, but <laughs> let's continue. So we're going to look at the top five cards that lost value this week, coming in at number five is Ancestral Vision from Time Spiral, down 75 cents to 25.58. Now, of course, this was just reprinted in Iconic Masters as a rare. There's a lot of copies out there of that version. It has different art as John Avon art, which looks nice. I like the original art myself, but I can see where the John Avon art can be very appealing too. Now, if you want the new version, you can get it for about 15 bucks or so, so it's a lot cheaper than this one. But if you do want the original, it is still coming down and will continue to come down. Actually, what saved this card from probably really tanking is the As Foretold deck, because that's a key part of that deck, and if it wasn't there, the playability of Ancestral Vision has been dropping recently. I think it's a little too slow for some of the control decks out there, actually, that were kind of the bread and butter for this card up until recently. So it's fallen out of a lot of those, but As Foretold's propped it up a little bit. Number four, Engineered Explosives. Down $1.25 to 45 81 This is the fifth Dawn version. Now, this card has been a key sideboard card, not just the modern, but a lot of formats for a while now. It's seeing a little bit less percentage of play recently because of that it has been ticking down at least a little bit. Number three, maybe the poster child for less percentage of play, Tarmogoy from Future Sight, down $1.72 to $92.02. So last week, all four Tarmogoys were dropping pretty dramatically. This week, it's just this one, but maybe a little surprising considering this is the original one from Future Sight. Kind of hard to find. Has unique border, unique art. A lot of people are attracted to this card. Now, with that being said, I mean, look at the difference, though. You can get a Modern Masters 2017 version of the card for closer to the $55 mark, right? So this is dramatically higher, and that's not going to ever change, even though this could go down a little more before it stabilizes. But this is going to be the more sought-after version and the harder-to-find version of the card. 
Now, when it comes to percentage of play, yes, a lot less play than it has been seeing in the past. A lot of that's due to Fatal Push just being such an amazing card against the lower casting cost creatures. But even aside from that, the card does still see play. Like, it's not going to go away. Like, this thing isn't going to bottom out at, like, 20 bucks or anything like that. But it will go down some more. Number two, Crucible of Worlds from 5th Dawn, down $1.99 to $64.19. Now, this card, still a fantastic card. Maybe sees a little less play than it once did. Although you do see this out of a lot of sideboards and different strategies. Not just in Modern, but also Legacy and Vintage. So it's a classic card. It's a staple, definitely, still to this day. Could it be in Masters 25? I do think there's some speculation around that because it feels like it's time. We've seen so many other cards reprinted in so many places. This card has never been in a Masters set. It just feels like it almost has to be in Masters 25. And number one this week is Emrakul, the Unstorn from Rise of the Eldrazi, down 221 to 4170. This card had a nice little bump recently thanks to its play in some Breach decks, and it's just snapping back a little bit this week. All right, let's move on to the cards that have gained value this week. You'll actually see some aggressive gains in Modern, so it's definitely heating up as people are thinking about playing some Modern this winter. Number five, Shattering Spree from Guild Pack is up 282 to 1586. This card kind of spikes every once in a while. Usually when, like, Affinity puts up some good results, people run out and get this card and start adding it to their sideboards. And you do see this card show up in any number of sideboards. Most recently, I've seen it in some successful Naya Burn decks. But it really can show up in a lot of places. Number four, Liliana of the Vale, up 370 to 89.27. This is the Innistrad version. This card just keeps going up and up and up. Since we saw her in Modern Masters 2017, we might not see her again for a while. I mean, that's probably pretty fair speculation. So people are jumping on board, picking up the card now. And she's great in Modern, great in Legacy. That's not going to change. Number three, Mox Opal from Modern Masters 2015, up 426 this week to 6865. I just mentioned Affinity, this is a key part of that deck, but also good in Lantern Control decks, for example, and a lot of other places. I mean, it's just a great card for Modern as well as some Legacy and Vintage decks. Number two, Celestial Colonnade, up 458 this week to 5349. This card just keeps going up and up and up. This one could use a reprint as well. Hopefully in Masters 25, but who knows. Actually breaks the $50 mark this week. Now, this card's been hot in control decks like your Jeskai Control and your Azorius Control Modern, of course. But also recently, there was a Geist deck that put up a nice result. So this was a key part of that deck to roll all that stuff together. This card has become incredibly aggressive. And number one this week, Leyline of the Void from Guild Pack, up 477 this week to 2548. This is a card that's great for dredge decks, and dredge decks have been putting up some good results. So they'll come out of the sideboard to deal with certain matchups. Mostly other dredge decks, but uh, yeah, this is a card that actually probably could use a reprint. It's been reprinted once before, but I think it's time for another one. All right, let's move into the top five legacy cards that have lost value this week. Now, you're going to notice when we get into the world of legacy, things are relatively slow. There's a lot of dual lands on the list, which is a good indication that things are stable. There's a couple notable cards, though, here and there. Number five is Taiga Unlimited, down 3386 to 194 39. Number four is Badlands from Unlimited, down 4494 to 25499. Number three is Tundra from Unlimited, down 7116 to 32784. Number two, Jazam Jin, down 10198 this week to $730. Now, this is about time. I've been saying this card needs to snap back. It was aggressively climbing for a little while now. Has a nice little snap back this week. Definitely expected. We'll have to kind of see what happens now. Does it stabilize around like the $700 mark or was this an indication that there was a small buyout and these copies are starting to come back into the marketplace? And if that's the case, it could go down some more. But I think generally this card is just an awesome card. It's great 9394 format. It's an Arabian Nights, very iconic card, a big piece of magic history here and getting harder and harder to find, especially in good condition. So I think all these things rolled together, especially how hot Arabian Nights are right now. I think this card stabilizes high and probably does start to go back up again. Number one, Diamond Valley, Arabian Nights, down 218 and 99 cents to 30901. Now this card was the target of a buyout. It was being reintroduced in the market, dropping back down. It bumped back up last week. I think it's just trying to find its price point and it takes a heavy loss though this week. So yeah, I do think this will stabilize pretty soon, but it'll probably come down a little more first. All right, let's move on to the legacy cards that have gained value this week. 
Coming in number five is Gwendolyn Dicorsi. She's up 36.66 to 166.66. Wow, that's not easy to say, <laughs> but she was the target of a buyout. She has been going up over the last couple weeks. This is the third week in a row now that we've seen a pretty decent increase. I would expect that this will stabilize pretty soon. It won't go back down to where it was prior to the buyout. That's just unfortunately how these things work. But I do expect this to start coming down as these cards will get reintroduced in the market, probably shortly into the new year. Number four, Scrubland from Unlimited of 41.49 to 239.98 this week. Number three, Candelabra of Tanos has a pretty conservative lift of $45 to 675. Number two, King Solomon up 48.71 to 138.95. This card every once in a while hits our list. Maybe this is the start of a buyout. Maybe it's just a card that got listed a little higher this week. We'll have to kind of wait and see, but it is another one of those classic Arabian Nights cards that people are buying up when they see them. And number one, Drop of Honey, another Arabian Nights card, a 54.50 to 446.49. This card had a little bit of a dip last week, and it snaps back this week. All right, let's talk about a couple notable cards. There's not a lot going on in the market this week, honestly, but there were two cards I wanted to highlight. I wanted to check in on Bizarre Baghdad since we have been following this over the last couple weeks. It is down some more this week, down $432 to $1,975. So it is coming down. It will continue to come down some more, obviously, as the hype subsides. We talked about all the details in the previous videos with Rudy from Alpha Investments. Basically, he was trying to kind of prove a point as to how volatile the market was. And yeah, this was partially the result of it. There were also some high listings for the price. Was that tied in with Rudy or not? Who knows? Or maybe somebody saw the video and decided they were going to list these at high prices. So all of that created kind of an artificial inflation for the cart. It's coming back down now. It won't go back to where it was. It was actually very undervalued, I think, actually where it was. So it's not going to go that low, but this will continue to drop some more. And the other card I want to point out was Library of Alexandria. This is up 487.09 this week to 1,250. Actually, pretty nice increase, especially percentage-wise for a classic card like this. Now, the reason I was watching this card this week was because Rudy did a video where he was kind of explaining the whole Bizarre Baghdad thing, why he was buying Bazaar as opposed to Library of Alexandria. In fact, that was the topic of the video. And as soon as he had a video where he says the word Library of Alexandria, I started watching this card because it's just one of those things that even if no one's like trying to buy it out or anything like that, just putting it in people's minds could result in some increased interest. And when it comes to a card as rare as an Arabian Nights card, that increased interest could lead to just a few purchases, which could actually cause a spike. So that maybe is what happened, or maybe it's just a coincidence, but this is a pretty nice increase. I just want to point it out to you. All right, with that being said, those are the cards for this week. Happy New Year, everybody. We are going to see you in the new year, January 1st, as a matter of fact, because we're going to be talking about some rivals of Ixalan as previews begin. I'm really excited. Standard will start to heat up again. It's been real boring recently just due to the fact we've been at the end of the meta. So looking forward to some changes there. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.